our next item, which is version control. Version control is another optional feature inside of AuthorIt. Now, the wording version control may be a little misleading to you. It's not document version control like you may think of um, for, say, a Perforce or a Visual Source Safe, or maybe you're using Subversion or something along those lines. It's not that sort of version control. It's AuthorIt's version of version control, and we'll take a look at what that means now. So with AuthorIt version control, you're using it to create proposed changes to an object that you're not ready to publish yet. All right, so you want to make a proposed change to an object, basically state that object until you're ready to start publishing it. Now one thing to keep in mind about version control is that it's on an object level. In other words, if you create a new version of a book, that doesn't mean that every object in that book gets a new version. You have to select every single object and then tell AuthorIt to make a new version of all of those objects. You can multi-select objects when you do say to create a new version, so that's not necessarily an issue, but there is some maintenance involved with version control. The other thing to keep in mind is that each time you tell AuthorIt to create a new version of an object, AuthorIt increments the version uh, number up by one. You don't have control over that number, so you can't use version control um, with the same version numbers as, say, your software releases, for example. So you have to just sort of inherently know what version one means, what version two means, and so on. So again, a little bit of maintenance involved with version control. Now here's a version control life cycle. By default, whenever you create a new object, that object is in a version 1, and it has a status of active. Active status means that object can be published. Active is a publishable status. Now if you select that object, and tell AuthorIt to create a new version of it, AuthorIt will create a new version, give it a version 2, and that status of version 2 will be inactive. Inactive status means that object cannot be published. This is the version that you would make your proposed changes in, okay? This is your staged version here. You cannot publish it yet because you can't publish an inactive object. So you would make your changes to that object. And then when you are ready to start publishing that object, you would select it and tell author it to make it the active version. When that happens, version 1 becomes redundant. And then version 2 becomes the active or publishable version. Redundant is a read-only status. Now you can flip-flop between different versions if you want to. So you can always go back to version 1 tomorrow. You can go back to version 2 the following Monday. Author it, you know, doesn't care about that. It just wants you to tell it what version to publish. Now let's take a look at those statuses in a little more detail. And then we'll take a look at version control. So we've got three statuses that we are working with, with version control. The active status is the current version. It is the publishable version. All right, so when you go to select to publish a book, the objects in that book would all be the active version that gets published. Now, when you have an inactive status, this is the proposed version. It is editable. It just can't be published. And lastly, we have redundant. This is the previous version. It is not editable, and it is not publishable either. Okay, But you can go back and make an old redundant object active if you'd like to. So we have a question here, version numbers are whole numbers only. Yes, that is correct. 
they'll increment by one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And we don't have control over those numbers. All right. Now a little uh, message here, you can have as many inactive and redundant versions of an object as you need to, but only one version of that object can be active. In other words, only one version of that object can be publishable. So you can have, say, 10 versions of an object, only one of those can be in the active status, meaning only one version can be publishable. This way, when you go to publish the object, author it knows exactly which object to publish. So let's take a look at version control here. Go ahead and close my book. Now, let's say that I've got a release coming out, and I want to create a new version of some of the objects in my X1000 user guide. Now a good reason for me to want to create a new version is because let's say that I want to retain the previous version of those objects and create a new version and make changes to the new version only. So I'll have the previous version of those objects available if I ever need to go back and publish them, but I want to start off with a new copy of those objects and place my changes in them for this next release. So what you'll do to use version control is select the objects that you would like to be the new version. And you can multi-select those objects. So let's say that I would like to make these objects a new version. What I'll do, select them, go to the Manage ribbon, and say, create a new version of the selected objects. When I do that, yes, I'm sure, you'll see that I get new objects, all right? And they're in the draft release date, because remember I just said to place new objects in draft in the administrator module. Now let's go ahead and move this version column over so we can see it a little easier here. All right. Now what's happened is we've got the new versions of those objects. They have a version number of two. They are in the inactive status. Previous versions are still in the uh, version one and active status. I have to manually tell author it when I want to make those objects active. I can open these objects up, make changes to them independently from the original version. So any changes I make to the proposed object are not made in the original object. All right, let's add in a bullet point here. Check out our website for more details. Okay, so I would go through, make my proposed changes to these objects that I've created new versions of. Now let's take a look at my X1000 user guide. I want to open up my X1000 user guide and point out something here. Notice how I still have the version 1 active status inside of my book, okay? The active status is the status that is in a relationship with my book. But now watch what happens when I decide to make my objects that are inactive active now. So I'm ready to start publishing my proposed changes. So I'll select those objects. I'll go up here to the Manage ribbon, make the selected objects the active version. Now when I do that, yes I'm sure, version 2 becomes active, version 1 becomes redundant, and the active version has now been replaced in all of the relationships that version 1 was in. So any relationships to books, to hyperlinks, to index entries, and so on, those objects' relationships are now the active 
objects. All right, so Author has automatically updated all of those relationships for me with the new active version. So I can now publish these objects from Author it. All right, and if we take a look here, we see that object one here is redundant. And if I open it up, you'll see read only in the banner. So redundant objects are non-modifiable. However, I can go back if I'd like to, select these objects that are redundant and say, hey, make these the active version now. Yes, I'm sure. Author, it will now make these the active versions. And version 2 is now back to being the proposed object. And if I went to my book, product features, for example, back to version 1. All right, so again, you can only publish the active version. Only one version of that object can be active over time. All right, now if you wanted to make a new version of version 2, you could certainly do that. You can have as many versions of an object as you like. Just keep in mind that you don't necessarily have control over the version number. So what I recommend people doing to keep track of what that version means to you, let's open this up in Properties view. Just in the Description field, maybe you'll want to enter in some information about what, uh, what version 2 actually means to you in this case. All right, you can just give yourself a little note in the description field, and that note doesn't have to appear in the print help or web headings.